In this video, we're going to be looking at a common low-level design coding question, which is to design an access management system. So let's jump in. Here we have the description on the left and the code on the right. So we'll dive deeper into the code later. So right now we're gonna focus on the description to get a clear idea of what's required. So our job is to design an access management system that supports the following. So firstly, role-based access control with three primary entities, role, permission, and user. Each role has a unique name and a set of permissions, for example, delete user or ban user. A user can possess multiple roles and roles may be shared by many users. A user is considered to have a permission if any of their roles contains that permission. And the core operations include creating new roles, granting additional permissions to an existing role, assigning or revoking roles for a user at a given time, and checking whether a user currently has a given permission. And so the methods that we should implement are firstly the access manager constructor. So this will initialize the internal role registry and user to role mapping. We'll have a create role method. So this will add a new role. We'll have a grant permissions method, which will take a role and a permission, and it'll simply add that permission to the specified role. We'll have a sign role role method which will take a user and a role and this will give the role to the user and we will also have the reverse so revoke role so this will remove the role from the user and then finally we will have the has permission method which will take a user and a permission and it will return true if the user currently has a permission or false otherwise and so to look at a quick example here so here we've got the classes and methods that are being called as well as their parameters but I think the easiest way is just to look at the explanation. So firstly, we'll call access manager. This will simply initialize the access manager class and this will return null. Then we'll create a role admin. Similarly, that will return null. We'll grant the delete user permission to the admin role. That will also return null. Then we'll assign the role of admin to this user Alice. That will return null. And now we can check. We can check does Alice have delete user? And because delete user is a permission in the admin role, that will return true. We can check does Alice have ban user. The ban user permission is not in the admin role, so that returns false. And same thing with Bob. Bob has no role, so therefore we return false. Then we revoke the role uh, admin from Alice, that returns null. And then we can simply check does she now have the delete user? And because the admin role has been revoked, she no longer does, so we return false. So hopefully that gives a clear idea of what we need to do. So let's jump into the code. So at the top here, we have a role. And so this is just a name plus a set of permissions. So we use a set because we want kind of O of one lookups and we're using a default factory set, meaning that every new role starts with an empty set, which equates to zero permissions. And we're also using the data class decorator here to keep the class definition declarative. It's just a field with name and types, while the decorator itself will fill in the mundane code for constructing. Next, we have the access manager class. And in the constructor here, we have firstly roles. So this is a dictionary where the keys are the role names and the values are the role objects, which contain the permissions. We also have user roles, which is a dictionary where the keys are the user IDs and the values are a set of the roles the user has. Next, we have the create role method and in this method we simply check that the role exists before creating a role object. Next we're going to create an internal method get role and so this will have a leading underscore to indicate it's for internal use and this will be used for centralizing validation for retrieving a role and it also has a side effect of keeping the API clean which many interviewers will like to see. Next we have the grant permission method which adds a permission to a role and here we're using that internal get role method to ensure that the role exists and then we use the add on the set to add the permission to that role. Next is the assign role method which will add a role to a user and we use set default here which gives us an empty set so that we can use this the first time we see a user and then from there on we can just add roles to that user set. The revoke role method removes a role from a user and we use the discard here which removes a role but will stay silent if there isn't any roles present for the user. So it's a nice method to know. And then finally there's the has permission method which will iterate over the user's roles and stop on the first match and return a boolean if they have the specified permission. Okay so let's run the code and see if it works. Perfect, the test case pass. So let's submit the test suite. Okay, all tests are passing. So let's have a look at the time and space complexity. So the has permission method has a time complexity of big O of OR, where OR is the number of roles held, held by the user as we have to iterate over those roles. And then all the other methods are O of one due to the use of hash maps and a hash set. For the space complexity, we have O OR plus P plus A, where OR is the total number of roles, P is the total permissions across all roles, and A is the total role to user assignments. 
In reality, these numbers are going to be trivially small, but if your user wants to get specific, this is what the space complexity is. And so the key optimizations we've done is both roles and user role mappings are maintained with hash maps, while each user role's permission list is a hash set. So this is a relatively short low level design, but sometimes people can get caught off with the time pressure as well as how to construct the right mapping between users, roles and permissions. But once you've seen it once, it should be super straightforward and hopefully it makes the interview very easy. So I hope you got some value out of this. If you want to test yourself, the link to the question is in the description and be sure to like and subscribe and share with a friend. It helps the channel out a lot and hopefully I will see you in the next one.